what's up everyone, Adam Sachs with Guy the Cube, and may the fourth be with you. Alright. Now that we've nerded out on Star Wars, there were a ton of updates yesterday. Whoo! And we're gonna try and talk about some of them. Earlier this week, we had an update for Power BI Desktop, and there were a ton of updates inside of it, as usual. And the things that I really liked inside of this that I heard about, one was the relative date slicer. So this allows you to choose like, hey, I just wanna look at the last three years, the last three months, last three days. That's pretty exciting. Also, we had some updates for URL support, including the ability to use mail to URLs inside of reports. Another item that got a lot of buzz was the report level measures for AS tabular live connections and for live connections against a Power BI service data set. That's awesome. A lot of people have been asking for this for a while and I know it doesn't cover direct query, which a lot of people want, but baby steps. There were also a ton of other updates, so be sure to check out the blog for everything and make sure you update Power BI Desktop to the latest version. Probably the biggest announcement that happened yesterday is the introduction of Power BI Premium. This is a new licensing option that's done by capacity, not by user. So one of the things I've heard from a lot of customers is I need a Power BI Pro license for to do all the cool things inside of Power BI. But if I have a big organization, that becomes problematic with getting that many pro licenses. So Power BI Premium is there to help with that situation where you pay for capacity, not for users. And so you get Power BI Pro for a bunch of your core users and business analysts. And then when you wanna get your consumption folks to be able to see those reports, you stick it behind premium. Watching Twitter yesterday, there are still a ton of questions that haven't been answered yet because we haven't gotten all the details out. There is an upcoming webinar that you can sign up for for free that will give more details on it. I'll have a link down in the description below for that that you can go directly to. And you can bet I'm gonna be doing videos on it. So we're gonna have videos on how to use it, what it is, how to integrate it with other things. That's all coming up, so stay tuned. We announced apps and app workspaces. Those are now live inside of Power BI, so if you sign in today, you will see those. You'll see the menu option for it. I did a video on this that I released yesterday, so if you're not quite sure about everything about apps and app workspaces, go check out that video. I'll have it linked up above, and you can go check out the blog post, which is down in the description below. I've been telling people for a while now that the new nav, which was in preview, is coming. It's here. So the new nav is now also in production. So when you log into Power BI, if you haven't done so yet, you're gonna see the new nav and you're gonna see the apps option. So be sure to check it out and check out the blog post below and the video. Something I know a lot of people are excited about is Power BI Report Server. We announced that yesterday. This is your option for Power BI reports on premises. Ricardo Muti posted a blog post detailing some of the things about this, also highlighted some of the licensing options for you, so I highly suggest you go read the blog post to find out those details. I also caught a tweet from Ricardo indicating that there's gonna be more news about Power BI report servers, so stay tuned on that. This is part of the reporting services family. We'll continue to still have SQL Server reporting services as well for 2017, and he indicated that the release or the general availability of Power BI report server will be late in the second quarter of 2017. With all the updates for Power BI, let's not forget about the Power BI mobile app. There was a blog post detailing all the updates for April and included in this were background colors for reports, the ability to do right to left language support in iOS. Also for iOS was the ability to ask questions of your data through Q&A. This requires that you be on iOS 10 or later. And a very cool thing is custom visual support, assuming they're mobile friendly, inside of the Power BI mobile app for all devices. All right, what was your favorite item? There were a ton to choose from. Go ahead and leave that down below in the comments and let me know. If you like the video, hit that like button down below. If it's your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more great videos from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. May the fourth be with you. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.